what what's an HBCU? Yeah, an HBCU is a historically black college or university. PWI just stands for predominantly white institution. There's not much you can like get confused about that. It's just the majority of the students are Caucasian. So yeah, and we're just gonna touch on like our own personal experience. You know, being like a black student at like HBCU versus my experience being a black student at a PWI. So do you think HBCUs are still important in this now day and age? Yes, yes they are still important. The negative perspectives on HBCU, I would, if you ever hear any, I would challenge you to take it upon yourself to learn about HBCUs before you make those negative perspectives part of your ideologies or your mindsets because some of them are just not true. I will say one is true that HBCUs don't get a lot of funding, but it's not true that they're not diverse. It's not true that the, the culture on HBCUs are aggressive. Like, I've never experienced a lot of aggression on my campus. Mm -hmm. If you've experienced aggression on your campus, that's a know, problem. Yeah. That's something you need to probably get away from, avoid. Mm -hmm. talk to somebody about you know do not stay there in those toxic situations guys do not do that get out you better run like the man and get out run <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm just thinking about the lady in the movie <laughs> what movie did she get out oh yeah, yeah get out. <laughs> no <laughs> sorry i was going off on tangent but like when you were saying like get out like get out of that situation i thought about him <laughs> yeah um, okay <laughs> don't let those negative perspectives stick around like as the black community we shouldn't allow them to stick around those colleges were originally built for us don't let some an outside force tarnish that reputation that we built or worked so hard to build or so many before us have worked so hard to build and don't let HBCUs die like learn about them if you don't go to one support one if you don't ever want to go to one that's cool. No one's forcing me to go where opportunities lead you to go. But don't talk bad about it just because you don't like the campus. Right. Because that can affect another student who's like thinking about going to that campus, but they're like, oh, this person said this thing, so it must be true, but maybe they just had a bad experience or just a bad perspective or like listen to a stigma right. or a stereotype about it. So, not cool. Not cool. Like TSU, main HBCU, I hear a lot of bad stuff about. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Well, we, you have really great graduates coming out of that school, though. So Right, really great graduates. Y'all gotta change the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Change the conversation. Hashtag change the conversation. <laughs> the rhetoric is tired, but HBCUs need our support. And that's like, period. So next we're gonna talk about is culture shock. We both came from a high school that was predominantly white. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I think you mentioned it. You live in neighborhoods that yeah. are predominantly like Caucasian, suburban. Same here. So we both kind of came from the same background, at least in schooling. Like black neighbors. You know, like, <laughs> well, I do in this really? neighborhood. That's what's up. Like, did we experience any culture shock going from that kind of environment to you going to an environment that's completely different oh, yeah. to me going to an environment that's similar, you know, to what I grew up with? Because I grew up in that kind of environment, it wasn't as much of a culture shock. Not saying there wasn't a culture shock because, um, I'm going to say this. Hey, so I wanted to pop in real quick. I'm currently editing the video and I got to this point in the video and I realized that I didn't do a good job in explaining my answer. I just felt like my answer is very confusing. So I thought I would just come on real quick and um, clarify what I was trying to say. But basically what I was trying to say is like I said before, I am no stranger to living in a neighborhood and going to a school that is predominantly um, Caucasian. And so I'm used to interacting in that kind of environment. I feel like the culture shock um, that I experienced when I went to Belmont mainly came from the fact that my school environment and my neighborhood environment, I guess you can say generally, it was always just there as a school environment and a neighborhood environment. But then when it became my home life, well, um, that's where everything changed. So I'm used to going to school and kind of interacting in that kind of environment. But when I came home, it's a different environment. Like some of the things that African-American families do generally are just different from, I feel like other families and other ethnicities deal with. And it's just, again, a general thought. How we did things at home was different from how we did things at school, of course. And, um, and that, really, that really hit me when I actually moved away from home and onto a campus 
And so it was like my school life blended in with my home life and there was no separation. And that was a culture shock because I was used to that separation, if that makes sense. And so and like my roommate was Caucasian or was, she is, she, she is Caucasian and um, from freshman year. And I had no problem rooming with someone who was a different race than me. What I, um, what I learned from that was that we just had different ways of how we were raised, you know, especially or just how we take care of ourselves, like especially hair care was different. And I had no problem. Like we didn't have any problems in the room. No one's a good year. I'm not like complaining about that. It was just a culture shock from like going from like the habits and values and that we had, not saying that we don't have values that align, but it was just like, I never experienced that kind of school life mixing in with my home life and no separation. So that's the biggest culture shock that I explained. Um, also, I feel like Belmont's a little bit like a bubble, but I'll go more into that um, later in the video, but that's my culture shock inversion of Belmont. And the one, one of the ways I kind of like combat that was actually joining the Black Student Association at school, BSA, so I can kind of surround myself with other fellow African Americans that have similar home life that I can kind of get that separation from. But yeah, I hope this made more sense. I was just really scared I was gonna offend people with my answer, even though I just got it. this is my truth and I'm just speaking it and I hope that you understood that. My it was a culture shock. It really was, cause I came from you know the suburban neighborhood, all white people, been in a white um, school system all my life. Mm -hmm. But I will say personally, my culture shock was well welcomed. Like I love being culture shocked at my HBCU. Um, it's one thing off the bat that I can think of. Uh, People saying hi to me wherever I go. I definitely don't get that here. When I'm in the store, that's how people say hi. Like on my campus, hey, what's your name? Hey, Carly. Hey, I'm, I'm like, oh, hey, hey, y'all. Hey, like, it's totally different. Like, it's like you cannot stay a stranger on uh, my campus specifically, but hopefully that's the same atmosphere for any HBCU campus. Yeah, go ahead. I will say Belmont's really good at that. I will say that. Okay. Even though it's a PWI, I really do feel welcome and I get that same kind of like, hey, how are you? Wave at you kind of thing. Um, but maybe just kind of like my personality of being a friendly person. But my culture shock, like I welcomed it and it was like, I enjoyed being shocked by the culture I met. And like, look, <laughs> hit me. I enjoyed uh, the culture shock that I got from my HBCU. People were super friendly, and you mentioned that people were super friendly at Belmont they too, are. and that that's good for any campus, mm -hmm. particularly our campuses. We're good at welcoming people and doing that and not making sure you're a stranger. And another thing that was shocking for me was my teachers. Mm -hmm. Like Growing up in a system that was predominantly white, built for white kids or just not built for minority kids to succeed. My teachers in my HBCU shocked the mess out of me. In those systems, like, I, it was, I was just not, you know, projected to succeed and had teachers treat me wrongly and like I wasn't educated well on certain topics. But when I got to my HBCU, had uh, my English teacher actually um, I did one essay in his class and he was like, hey, um, I'm gonna extend this date for you on this essay and I want you to meet me in my office and I want to give you some help. I thought I was failing. I was like, oh no, I cannot be failing college <laughs> on my first year. <laughs> I was stressed out, like not stressed, stressed. Stressed? I was stressed. Let's see. Stressed. Natty. And I talked to him, I'm like, am I failing? And he's like, no. No, no, you're not feeling it. I just wanted to help you. I was like, you just want to do what now? I just wanted to help you. Like, I noticed that you had a few grammar errors or you had a few this, a few of that, and I just wanted to help you because I know your paper could be better. I was like, oh. That's what teachers are there for. They're like, yeah. to help you. Like, that shouldn't well, shock you. That shouldn't shock you. <laughs> but it did, and that's the. I think that's wow. the sad part about it because, like, and the school systems I grew up in and this neighborhood and this type of different cultures that I grew up in, one where I was not, it was not built for me to succeed versus one who that was all built for me specifically, that's what shocked me because mm -hmm. I wasn't used to it. I wasn't used to being told that I had potential in something and that something could be better. Unfortunately for me in personal situations, 
I had people telling me that what I could not do versus what I could do. And that was a big culture shock. It's a good culture shock though. Yes, you're right. Like I became confident in my stuff and then, you know, I finished out my year pretty well, you know, with four point so Thank you. I mean, we got to like other people who do that. I mean, it's not easy to get a 4.0. It really isn't. You can easily lose that 4.0. Oh, yeah. That's and it really takes a lot longer to regain it back. Even if you can regain it back, because sometimes you can't. True. I do want to say uh, what you said, your uh, professors being supportive of a yeah. good culture shock. I will say a good culture shock about Belmont is like, I, I went to a private Christian school when I was like in preschool, and then I went to a public um, school from high school from elementary and high school went to a magnet school middle school so I've had like a diverse like school setting mm -hmm. and now I'm back at a private Christian University and I will say the good thing about the professors that they the professors that I've had at least so far um, while at Belmont they're very supportive as well and I like how they're open with their faith like I'm open with my Christian Christian faith mm -hmm. but I'm also like I'm also like I'm open to talk about it. I'm also reserved in my time at like reading the Bible and stuff. So having these um, professors, like my first year writing, first year seminar professor, she would pray over us. She prayed over us the first day of school, prayed over us the last day of school. Like that how many professors cool. do you hear do right. that? Right, none. And then That's like cool. she wouldn't only just pray for us, but like the things happening and like you know like big important events happening, bad, good or bad happening in the world. She just. Like how many people say they're rooting for you and that they're praying that you know? That's some powerful stuff. Like prayer, no joke. Not all culture shock is bad. Like, yeah. Although like mine sounded like it was like negative. It wasn't negative for me. Yeah. So it definitely put me in a positive direction. So I enjoy my culture shock. I'm just trying to see if there's anything I'm missing. I don't want to miss anything. Food. Food is. <laughs> <laughs> Food. Oh man, let me tell you, Belmont got the. Oh, okay, well, most of the time, most most some days they have a okay, okay, good food. But uh, I can say the same for all of There's there's some hidden miss days. Yeah, y'all yeah. know there's some hidden miss days. But I I never in my whole life would have ever experienced a Chicken Wednesday. If I had that, at a, at a PWI <laughs> look. Y'all don't need to have it. It's for us. <gasps> what do you mean? No, 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 no. Well, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We have fried catfish, and we've had fried chicken before, but there's never, there's never a dedicated day to it. It's like a, it's like a surprise. We have know? two dedicated days. Friday is uh like fried fish Friday, like you like the whole day. Uh, like you just getting fried fish. That's what's up. And mm. Chicken Wednesday <laughs> well, is exactly what it sounds like. And all corn specifically makes it a whole thing. Like we call it like that day, our cafeteria is not just the cafeteria. It becomes club calf. We put mm -hmm. the DJ in the cafeteria. <laughs> we bump music. <laughs> we pull out all the hot sauces. Oh and we goodness. slather it on our fried chicken. And I've never in my life experienced <laughs> Such a religious, that. Like, such a religious like thing happening, yeah. and I was just like, "What?" When I went into the cafe the first time on my campus, I was like, "What in the world is happening? Why is everyone dancing?" And <laughs> what is? What is I've got some good chicken. I think that the chicken is really good. I personally wouldn't shout over the chicken, but there you go. The Shout over your chicken. <laughs> College is not meant for healthy people. Okay, it's if you're hard. trying to be healthy, it's hard. It's hard as mud. It doesn't matter where you go. I'm sorry, it's gonna be ramen noodle packets staring you in your face. Like you know, it's just hard. So just be prepared for that. You people going to college, you're not gonna stay healthy. But if you want to, you have to try really, really, really hard. I'm just gonna like wrap it up a little bit here. We're gonna start wrapping it up. Getting into pros and cons of going to Belmont. Let's start with the cons because I want to end with the pros. Positive note. <clears throat> Con again is lack of diversity. It is a PWI, so making sure that minorities are represented appropriately in that school setting is very important. It's something that we're always striving to work for. That's why we have BSA. That's why we are trying to get like um, more minor minority students in leadership roles in our um, school and having more professors that look like us in our role as well. There's 
those are like african-american minority professors in our school but there's always room for more of them again when i was talking about the marching man and the liveliness of hbcus we don't have that unfortunately we don't have a football team i miss that we have a pop and basketball team we have homecoming for that but it's nothing compared to like a football game tailgating marching band fried chicken wednesday fried fish friday whatever it was <laughs> chicken wednesday we don't have that we don't have dedicated dates we have other dedicated food days but not something like that like deep in the south dedicated food days that's like the culture of saying a belma it's a little bit different i feel like we're i will admit that i feel like we're kind of in a bubble and when i leave belma i'm kind of like oh we're now in the real world where like you know it's a little bit different from what i um, experience on a campus on a daily basis but now to pros i like i said community loved it location nashville i think it's really cool i still have lots to explore in nashville um I'm really excited to explore more of the gulch and all that good stuff I would say another like a pro for like a PWI in general is just the more funding opportunities because we have we're able to access more money and have more funding from alums and parents and all that stuff. We're able to c continue like we're building another dorm hall on our campus that's going to open this semester. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those are like my my pros I would say for Belmont and I I like the school I go to. I'm not bashing Belmont for being a PWI. I'm just saying my yeah. experience from going there i'm if i didn't like it i wouldn't be there i'm still there so yeah much love to you who are watching from belmont thank you so for all corns pros and cons i'll do the cons first just like she did so we can all both end on the positive note mm -hmm. the cons of all corn we all gotta get together <laughs> first is management it's administration management we we, we need to I don't even know what to say about it, but you need to get it under control. We need to be able to contact you guys immediately if we need help. We need you all to be progressing forward with stu the students who want to progress forward. We just want to work together with our school and not feel like here's management mm -hmm. and here are the students. Mm -hmm. We want it to be like we are all corn, like we're all in this together. Management and students working together. Yeah. Another um con is that Alcorn is in the middle of nowhere. I'm pretty sure half of y'all watching this video have never heard of Alcorn ever in your life until you saw this video. True. We are, <laughs> we are in the middle of nowhere. We just, we don't have enough exposure. Like, and if you're an Alcornite or you're an Alcorn alumni, talk about Alcorn. Make sure you're representing that you're from Alcorn. Um, another con, dorms we need dorms we need funding for those dorms mm -hmm. hbcus oh, on a worldwide status are highly underfunded if you're proud of your hbcu when you get out of it give back to it if you are not going to hbcu you'll never go to one but you like what that hbcu stands for give to that hbcu there's nothing wrong with supporting that it's like if you're the people who like black business Think of HBCUs as a big black business mm. that you could support. I love Fried Chicken Wednesdays and Fried Fish Fridays, yeah. but look, not everyone is into meat these days. HBCUs, we need to mix it up. Maybe some vegan options, just healthier options in general. We don't want to be, you know, out here being unhealthy. So help us out in being healthy college students. So that's all I'm going to say about the cab. Pros. We, Alcorn has a great, great, great supporting campus, and I want to stay like that. Like, great supporting faculty, great supporting students. Like I said, you will definitely not be treated like a stranger when you're on Alcorn campus. Um, the representation of people who want to achieve and achieve higher things and goals in life, that representation is on Alcorn's campus, and that's one of the main things I love about Alcorn V are people who have goals and are pursuing those goals. Uh, the last pro, Greek life. I don't even, I feel like I don't even need to say anymore. Uh, what Greek life is for some people who don't know, it would be like, you know, your fraternities and sororities. Too, I said we have it too. Right? Oh, you have it too. Like we call it Greek life too. Like some people just call it sororities and fraternities. Well, not every uh, PWI has Greek life, but for certain, almost every HBCU has Greek life mm -hmm. and that's experience I would say that I personally did not want to miss 
and I love Greek life. The AKs, the Qs, the the Zetas, the Deltas, the the Alphas, the uh, Iotas. Um, don't forget those people. Every, all the Divine Nine, all important, um, and they are important to Black history, and they're also important to our HBCU campuses. And that's something I wouldn't want to miss. So that was my last pro. Why I chose Alcorn is because I personally, coming from where I came from, wanted to go to HBCU, wanted to see what it felt like to be surrounded by people like me and by some familiarity, um, nothing wrong, not bashing PWIs, not that I wouldn't go to one. I just would, I just wanted to experience something different, get out of my comfort zone. And Alcorn has satisfied me in that, and I've met great people. Yes, he has some really good pros and cons. I feel like I didn't do Belmont justice. <laughs> pros <laughs> no. and cons. Like I'm gonna have to do a separate video, of, like what, my like why I chose Belmont and go more in deep in depth than that. Please feel free. Like I really want you guys to like let's start a conversation. Hashtag change the conversation down in the comments below. Use that hashtag. Answer any of your questions that we ask each other in this video. Yeah. Feel free to express your thoughts. Again, don't be hateful or mean or rude and just like bash anybody for their mm. thoughts in the comments because you will be deleted. I'm just gonna be honest because I'm 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 making a positive community. If you can't right. add to that then you can't right. be part no of it. No need for negativity. No negativity. No. We already have enough of that in our world. We just don't need that. Right. Especially here on this space right here. Classy crew, you guys are lovely, friendly, supportive people and we need to stay that way. Feel free to sit down with your families and yes. have these tough conversations yes. with them. Show them this video like analyze this video mm -hmm. if you, there's something we missed yeah comment below please like uh share this video on all your social media platforms like this is just an important topic and i think you guys realize that so yeah we thank you for watching and thank you carly for suggesting this because i just never crossed my mind to make a video mm -hmm. like this but when mm -hmm. she did she was i was like we have to like this is a great topic I feel like there's always more we can say about this topic because I am not really well versed in HBCU. My parents didn't go to HBCU. So having your experience and comparing it to mine, I think it's really, really uh, good. Topic. I liked being on the channel. Yeah. Like, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm a fan. Lustrous, right. highly melanated, highly hey. educated <laughs> college students. But yeah, that's all we have today. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a nice little thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you like this video and want to see more from me, or want to join the Classic Crew and be a member like Carly right here, make sure to hit the little red subscribe button down below. And don't forget to ring that little bell next to it to get notified exactly when I upload videos on Sunday. Sundays. Alright, you guys. I'll catch you guys back here next Sunday. Don't forget to stay classy. Bye.